when you see that they're using these slave laborers, you and a bunch of your friends are like, I'm never going to eat their chocolate again. I cannot support that process, right? And so a massive amount of people that have a voice that stop whatever it may be. It could be a boycotting of the bus systems that we, as we see during um, the civil rights movement. Or, again, during this time, they're boycotting British items. Okay, to make a point, to make a statement, to try to force the people that are in the wrong to do what is right. So a group that was known for their boycotts, that known for kind of stirring up this trouble in the colonies was a group called uh, the Sons of Liberty. It kind of sounds like a biker gang. Anyone ever get kind of get that vibe from that? I don't know a movie about them. Oh, I'm sure there is a bunch of this movies and, and documentation, but um, I think the like. Sons of Anarchy is like the actual, like the, like there's an actual group called Sons of Anarchy that's a biker game. So uh, maybe that's why I think of a biker game. But Sons of Liberty, Samuel Adams, John Adams, the people from Boston uh, that were really against uh, the British involvement in the colonies. Um, so they were formed. They did different things. They kind of antagonized people that supported um, the, the British crown, which again are who? What's the name for them? Loyalist, okay? British troops occupied Boston. So there is a presence of the British in one of their most important cities in America, Boston. Boston's kind of the cultural center of the United States, right? That's an important strategic place that the British put their troops to occupy. Um, and another issue, right? They, the British government dissolved the Massachusetts elected government. Basically saying, hey, however you're doing your government, your colonial government, yeah, not happening anymore. We're going to do it our way. That's an issue because Massachusetts has been around since right, 1620. They've been operating semi-independently. And now you have Big Brother stepping in and Big Brother hasn't been around for quite some time. Issue, right? Um, and so some of the evidences that we see and the things that the Sons of Liberty did, they tarred and feathered uh, loyalists, people loyal to Britain. So there is a political cartoon. Um, they, I think they, they've already tarred the individual, so they very painful to have cloth tar on you and then put those feathers. But um, you can't, I don't know if you can see it, maybe people up close, anyone see what he's putting in their guy's yeah, mouth? Or they're pouring into his mouth. Any guesses? Gasoline. <laughs> no, it's not. No. They're water, They're pretty much waterboarding them with tea. <laughs> uh, they're tea waterboarding them. Tea boarding them. Okay. Um, so it, tea was very symbolic of the British, right? If you were again a British person, you would enjoy afternoon tea, right? Tea and crumpets. Actually, I don't know. Or biscuits, cookies, that's what they call them. They call them biscuits, cookies. Anyway, that's one of the uh, things that they did um, to those loyalists. So, uh, John Malcolm, it wasn't um, fun for him. Oh, let's go back. Right? Moves to Boston in 1770, kind of during all this crazy time, and he becomes a target of the Patriots who. Tar and feather him there in 1774. So maybe uh, you think when you think about Boston, maybe you're like the person on the bottom right. It's like, yeah, man, Celtics, Red Sox, Bruins, awesome, awesome teams, right? Celtics having their basketball dynasty and Red Sox as well. And then you have the adults. Oh man, Paul Revere, the Midnight Ride, the Old North Church, the Boston Harbor, right? There she lies, everybody in the city of Boston. Anyway, so uh, in March 5th, so a, a thing to remember about March 5th. So it happens on the 5th, and five people die. March 5th, five people die. March 5th, five people die. 1770. So I, it, it's my opinion, and you could have other historians that disagree with me, but the Boston Massacre, in my opinion, is kind of that inciting incident when it comes to uh, the American Revolution. Why do I think it is? Because um, 
it's a massacre, right? More than one person died. It wasn't like someone just mouthed off to a British soldier, got up in his grill, and he whacked them then and there. Right? This was a group event. Multiple people died. Um, so blood had been shed in American soil. And if those British soldiers weren't there in the first place, right, this would have been a, a different situation. So again, uh, these hooligans and dock workers heckled British troops, right, maybe throwing some pebbles and sticks and snowballs at them. Uh, and then this kind of mob started to develop, uh, right, spontaneous shots were fired onto the mob, to maybe to disperse them. Well, they actually killed five people. James Caldwell, Sam Gray, Samuel Gray, Pat Carr, Patrick Carr, I think, Samuel Maverick, and Crispus Attucks, who was an African-American as well. And so the interesting part was these people were actually acquitted of their crimes. By who? Someone say his name. John Adams. Who's John Adams? Who's John Adams? President John Adams. Right? And so it's interesting, right? This President of the United States has defended the soldiers that killed the five people that were actually acquitted. Um, but one thing we gather from this is that everyone has the opportunity for a fair trial. Right? Everyone's side should be heard. Okay, and so John Adams uh, helped the, those soldiers get acquitted. So different cartoons and uh, information was spread about the events that took place in uh, Boston on that day. If you see in the picture there, there's a picture of a building in the background. That building actually still stands to this day, um, which is in the middle of downtown Boston, which is kind of weird. If, who's ever been to downtown Boston before? Right? Have you been to that site? Okay. So, if you actually go there, I was able to go there and visit most of these places in Boston. But that's the, the like courthouse slash, you know, government building there in Boston, still standing to this day. And then the, the circle spot was actually the scene of where the massacre took place. Okay? And so you have people, you know, <laughs> travel and, and, and go to these different sites. And then you, you look around right, in the city, and you, you take a full circle, and there's these skyscrapers all over the downtown. So it's not like, hey, this is Old Town Boston, and you have all the old sites. It's like all together, modern and old. So they kept those sites. Uh, there is the grave sites for those who had died in the Boston Massacre. The Tea Act, the Tea Act, 1773. So uh, this is important to understand the political and economic situation that uh, Britain put the colonies in. So East India Company, which, which was a company ran by the British, was in some trouble financially, right? Hard to pay the bills. So the company wanted to sell the tea directly to the colonists instead of using merchants. So they created what is what is known as a monopoly on the tr t trade of tea. What is a monopoly? Illegal. It is illegal, but what is it? How would you describe a monopoly? Owning of the entire street. <laughs> Owning the uh, boardwalk. What's the other one? Uh, it's a game, right? Like monopoly. Like property or something? That's to do with owning things. Davis? Yeah, so they controlled anything that dealt with tea. So if you wanted tea from the Dutch, right, you technically couldn't get it because they weren't allowing that to happen anymore. Right? And so prices are lowered. They gained a monopoly trade on tea, um, and other merchants could not compete with what the East India Company was doing with basically underselling them, right? 
And so people that made their money selling these other teas that they got from other places and other merchants, they now couldn't sell it anymore. Okay? Um, and then they also looked to see if people were smugglers. Right? Are they bringing any illegal contraband, meaning tea, from foreign places to, uh, to sell for profit? Right? So they had people inspecting those boats, loyal to the crown. And then, as a result, you have the Boston Tea Party. Okay? Right? And this was organized by who? Who organized the Boston Tea Party? What group in Boston? Patriots. What specifically more so? Boston Patriots. The, the, the New England Patriots. Get it right. No. What group? We talked about them that kept antagonizing the Loyalists, oh, stirring up trouble. Yankees? No, oh, what are those guys? Sons of Liberty. Yeah, Alright, so here's a quick background on the Sons of Liberty. Pay attention here to get some context here. Let me know if you can't hear. In 1765, the 13 British-owned American colonies were outraged. Great Britain had spent a lot of money on all the wars they fought and thought the American colonies should pay the bill. So all the way across the Atlantic Ocean in London, the British Parliament and King George III decided to impose a Stamp Act on the colonies. What this meant was that all pieces of paper used for official documents, like birth certificates, land records, even newspapers, had to have a British stamp on them, and that stamp cost money. The thing that made the colonists the most angry was the fact these taxes had been decided without anyone from the colony's present in Parliament to have a say in the matter. A group of colonists who called themselves the Sons of Liberty decided to do something about this unfair treatment. They refused to pay the tax and threatened the men assigned to collect it. King George III saw he had a problem, so he ended the stamp tax, but then decided to demand a tax on other things like glass, paper, lead, paint, and tea. Again, the colonists were furious, especially the Sons of Liberty, who led a movement to discourage colonists from buying any British-made goods. A group of women organized and called themselves the Daughters of Liberty. They refused to buy British-made cloth and made their own instead. Again, the king and parliament saw the problem and repealed or stopped the tax, but not the tax on English tea. They wanted to show the colonists Great Britain still had power to tax the colonies. In response, the colonists started drinking coffee and Danish imported tea, and in a bold move, the Sons of Liberty dressed up as Native Americans, crept on a British ship loaded with tea, and dumped 90,000 pounds of it in the Boston Harbor. This was called the Boston Tea Party. These events, along with many others, caused the colonies to eventually declare independence from Great Britain, which started the Revolutionary War. Again, that's the Sons of Liberty. It started the uh, Boston Tea Party. All right, stay with me. Sit up straight. Come on, guys. We have a few minutes here. We got this. And then the Boston Tea Party. Here's some context, here's some visuals with this as well. Boston, Massachusetts, December 16, 1773. It's party time. G R A S T, a group of colonists dress up as Indians, they go aboard British ships, which are bringing the new tea shipment that they're supposed to pay a tax on, and they throw them. But what is it about tea that gets everybody so riled? Tea starts off as a luxury good, and then during the 1700s, it really goes from a luxury good becoming so widely available that even the homeless poor are able to drink two cups of tea a day. The British love tea, but 
but so too do 18th century Americans who back then considered themselves British, but with one important difference. The British get to elect representatives in Parliament. Americans don't. Hence, this revolutionary tempest in a teapot. It was really the straw that broke the camel's back. The colonists thought, right, that's it, and then we get the bottom teapot here. The, the revolution begins in earnest. And so the food revolution turns into the American Revolution. And it would soon sweep around the world. There you go. So, again, there's some context with the um, Boston Tea Party organized by the Sons of Liberty. Okay. All right, let's get, keep going here uh, as we dig in deeper to both sides um, and the issues relating to the colonies. And the British. Mm. All right. So again, here's a, a picture image, right? You can see up here they're throwing the tea, ninety thousand pounds of tea. Um, I got the chance to go actually in the in the harbor on a boat ride when I was in Boston, and I really thought that would have been the best opportunity if someone had tea, I could just. You throw it in there, right? Be truly American and throw some tea into the harbor. But fortunately, I just had that lame story that I wasn't able to. But I thought about it, really did. Uh, so the Boston Tea Party takes place, right? December 16th, 1773, there in Boston. Uh, in order so they didn't get uh, seen or didn't, I guess, uh, people didn't recognize them and just throw them under the bus. Right, they dressed up as Native Americans or Indians, I guess as they say, uh, tossed 342 chests of tea into the harbor. So it's symbolic, right? Tea was this oppressive tax on them. So what do you do? Well, let's destroy government property. Yay. Right? So they're revolting. They're destroying government property, which was the tea. Still no tea, nor destroyed anything else. They just yeet, yeeted the tea right into the Boston Harbor. Right. Uh, so David Kinnison, check out this story. He was actually a person that participated in the Boston Tea Party. He lived to be 115 years old. Okay, born in 1736. He survived both the American Revolution and the War of 1812. He served in the later uh, latter. He severed. Wait, served in the latter. Sorry, War of 1812. Uh, at the age of 76, and had his hand shot off at Sackett's Harbor. Several years later, his skull was fractured when a tree fell on his head. And then several years later after that, while he was training in a militia drill, premature explosion from cannons shattered both of his legs. When he recovered from his injury, his legs became covered with sores that never healed all the way. And he was stricken with... <laughs> Romanticism. Yeah, right. Um, sometime later, his face was mutilated when he was kicked <laughs> by a horse and finally died a quiet death. Right? Goes out very quietly in Illinois in 1851. What a hero, right? Like, I mean. He went to war when he was 76. Huh? He went to war when he was 76. He's a walking textbook. Right? Not only that, he escaped death multiple times. <laughs> Dude, this guy can't die, right? 1851, died a quiet death. Like, like they, you'd think he went out in, in a boom or something. But, but, man, he would have seen so many things. He would have seen the creation of our government. He would have been able to see and vote for so many people. Right, the Boston Tea Party. Um, other places had a similar event where they threw tea, right, in Chesterton. They did a tea party there, threw away those teas in the harbor there. At North Carolina, uh, threw their British goods away, right? Pledged not to buy any British goods. So as a response, as a response to them destroying government property, right? They're like, you can't do that. You just destroyed our property. They... Uh, enacted what is called, uh, uh, um, well, they didn't call it the Coercive Acts or the Intolerable Acts. Uh, the British didn't name them that way, but that's how they came across to the colonists, okay? So, 
Because they were naughty and threw their tea in the harbor, they blocked off the port. So they initiated the Boston Port Act. So they didn't allow anything to come into Boston. Boats ha- well, boats had to be in the harbor, had to be inspected, and then they were blocked off until they repaid all that tea that they threw in the water. Okay? That was their slap on the hand. Um, they also told people that they couldn't convene for government meetings. There was no free assembly or political activity. The Massachusetts Government Act. So all these assemblies that they had and the governments that they were running now were illegal. So if you met to plan some government activity in the colonies, especially in Massachusetts, you were technically committing treason. British troops accused of crimes to get British courts, trials, administrators of justice act, right? And Bostonians must feed quarter troops in homes, called the Quartering Act, right? So um, you have to pay, split the bill, you have to house these people, and you also have to feed them out of your pocket. Um, so they, they sent different resolves back to Parliament to say, hey, let's uh, ease some of these restrictions, right? Feel provoked. We'll be nice as long as you're nice. So Virginia House of Burgesses met with that. Carpenter's Hall there in Philadelphia. Con- Congress meets and convenes in Philadelphia to address these issues. How are we going to handle uh, the British? So the first Congress meets in September of, uh, and October of 1774. Uh, 50 delegates arrived. Not uh, many of them are from uh, Georgia. Okay. And they come up with those resolutions. They send it to the king. So here's they are. They're, like, they're pleading with the king. Help a brother out. We're British, right? We're your colonial um, people. We're so same British as the people there, right? Our, our rights should be extended to us as well, British rights. Our constitutional rights as Englishmen should be protected. Our rights as a colony should be protected as well. And so they're pleading with the king and saying, hey, again, we're not here to stir up any trouble. We're here to say, listen, listen to us. And it didn't go well, as we know. Um, The king really, I I don't, I believe it said he didn't even look at the um, resolutions that were offered. Okay. So the shot heard around the world. The shot heard around the world. The Battle of Lexington and Concord. So this is, what, five years, correct, after the Boston Massacre. Anyone confirm that? Five years, roughly, after the Boston Massacre. March 5th, what year? 1777. So five years after the Boston Massacre, we actually have war. So British controlled Boston, like we saw. Uh, People like uh, uh, and they were after two conspirators, right? Two patriot sympathizers. They were trying to arrest John Hancock, or yeah, John Hancock and John Adams, because they, again they were stirring up troubles in the colonies. What do you have to do? Arrest those troublemakers. So they seek to capture the. Um, arms. Okay, so they heard of different uh, places in Lexington and Concord where they had stored up munitions for their militia. Okay, they stored up weapons and supplies. The British had heard about that, and so that seems to them as, hey, they could uh, use this stuff against us. So they were on their way to Lexington and Concord. Paul Revere makes his midnight ride. Warning, warning, warning. Kind of like uh, Kevin from The Office. Uh, 
No, he says, right, the British are coming, the British are coming. So one of the three carriers to warn uh, the colonies that the British are coming to seize their weapons. Why is that an issue? Well, now they have no way to defend themselves from the British, right? They're taking the way, and what later became our Second Amendment right, the right to bear arms, they were going to go after uh, the colony's way of protecting themselves. Um, he was actually briefly detained, but was let go. They didn't really find anything on him. And British encountered militia at Lexington, shot herd around the world. Lexington, Massachusetts, not Kentucky, okay? Lexington, Massachusetts. And war had begun, okay? British retreat through the woods, and they were kind of heckled all the way back to Boston, different fires, people fired on them on their way back to Boston. And so they failed. The, the British failed at destroying the weapons depot or the munitions depot, and uh, they never did capture John Hancock or John Adams. Okay. So this is the bridge that the, the British would have retreated over in Lexington. Grave of the British soldier. They came 3,000 miles and died to keep the past upon its throne. Unheard beyond the ocean tide, their English mother made her throne um, in April 1917-75. Right, and so again, Boston, as we know, is the place of the American Revolution. And they just want to know his name, the horse's name, not Paul Revere. Other people that warned the British, Paul Revere, William Dawes, Samuel Prescott, uh, Caesar Rodney. Um, we'll stop there for today. Make sure you have that, uh, those stuff filled out. Okay.